Well, hey everyone, and welcome back to Tactical Review. So today we are out at the range at long last to start our endurance testing on this Palmetto State Armory Freedom AR-15. This is one of the least expensive ways to get into an AR-15, and I have an entire video on that, so we're not going to get back into that. Uh, but when I built this, I had told you guys that my intention was to do some steel case ammo endurance testing. And just real quick to go over what I'm wanting to do. Uh, this is not a meltdown test. We're not going to see how quickly we can cause uh, destructive failure due to volume of fire. It's not a fully automatic lower receiver, so that would make that difficult anyway. What we are going to do instead is see how long we can run this rifle on steel case ammunition with no maintenance until the operating system seizes or something fails. We're going to say it all. Uh, it may or may not end up due to that lack of maintenance and we will we'll just have to see what we see when we see it. Uh, this testing is very similar in concept to the military arm channel series uh, where Tim took a Bravo company AR-15 and was doing something very similar using federal ammunition. Now, as many of you know, uh, the AR-15 is considered to be a dirty and maintenance intensive weapon due to the fact that it craps where it eats, so to say, uh, because of the fact that the gas piston is internal to the bolt and bolt carrier assembly. I think that the longevity of the platform in combat theaters kind of shows that that's not as uh, critical or as factual as some people would lead us all to believe, uh, but that's what testing like this is for. And once again, uh, on top of the AR-15 being uh, recognized being accused of being a dirty platform uh, I'm also again using wolf steel case ammunition which is widely decried to be bad for your firearms and dirty ammunition so that's where we're going uh, just real quick to walk you through my testing methodology what my plan is is to do five 30 round magazines as like a, a series or a block. I'm not necessarily planning on this being five mag dumps as quickly as I can do, although there may be some rapid fire uh, in some of that. And then I'm going to set the firearm aside uh, until such time as the front sight base is cool enough for me to grab a hold of. Uh, it's not as scientific as using a, uh, an IR thermometer for the chamber temp and the gas block temp. Uh, but I feel like if I lock the bolt to the rear or leave the bolt locked to the rear and wait until that front sight base, which is also the gas block on an A2 style front sight, with a few exceptions, uh, that the rifle will be kept from completely overheating. Uh, again, this isn't a meltdown test. Uh, and then I'm going to do a thousand rounds at a session in roughly 150 round increments. And with the last five rounds, I'm going to do a bit of accuracy testing. Now we've discussed before that I am the weak link in any accuracy test. So today we have out here the high score black rifle shooting rest and we will use that to take myself out of the equation as much as possible now on top of this we have sitting a strike eagle one to six power low power variable optic uh, as you can maybe tell by the paint job if you're a long time viewer of the channel uh, this optic used to sit on my 300 blackout ar pistol uh, and getting that dialed in to where we were good for 223 instead of 300 blackout, uh, I did put uh, about 36 rounds through the firearm 
after my uh, cleaning and lubricating. So uh, if I get some shots, so if I get some shots of the chamber, the, it is not an entirely pristine chamber, but uh, I do ask that you just believe me that it was clean and lubricated well to start this test. So anyway, I'm gonna get some paper up downrange. We're gonna reset some cameras. We're gonna do our five shot group for accuracy. And um, yeah, we'll go from there. Even with the rest, I'm not the best shooter. Um, point of aim was up here. As I mentioned, I didn't get this fully zeroed, and that doesn't matter. What we care about is the group size, which would be a lot easier to measure if I had remembered a tape measure. But this is tactical review. It wouldn't be a tactical review range video if I didn't forget something at home. So anyway, I'm going to uh, mark this down and measure it later and you guys will have the advantage or the benefit of that after we edit. Even with the heat shield in it, this handguard's getting warm. All right, we're gonna let this guy cool down, load up some more mags, and uh, we'll do our next 150. Well, all right, so far today, we have put 994 rounds through the Palmetto State Freedom Rifle. Uh, I have the last five rounds right here. 
that we will be using for our uh, accuracy test to see if the barrel is more or less holding to the accuracy I was able to get out of it earlier today at the beginning of the testing and you will notice that that math doesn't quite work out and that's because you may or may not have seen this already depending on how I edited the footage uh, but we did have one failure well we had several failures to extract I'll talk about that after we do the accuracy testing and uh, I on one of those I had not seen the round still in the chamber and so I fed the next round uh, with a captive bolt I used the bolt release there we go and jammed another round into the back end of the round stuck in the chamber so that ruined that round uh, that puts us at a total since we cleaned and lubricated of 1030 rounds it will be 1035 after this Could be the shooter, could be the rifle, could be a combination of both, but it looks like there's my extreme spread. And uh, once again, because I didn't bring a tape measure or calipers or anything snazzy and scientific like that, you will have an actual measurement on screen when you watch this. So, that is, it looks like about 50% larger on that spread. We'll see. Again, that could have been combination of factors. I don't know, I will double check that the optic is actually tight as well. Uh, after a thousand rounds, that base could have wiggled loose. Anyway, um, I'm going to go back up by the benches and we will wrap this up. Okay, so a thousand rounds in, well, a thousand thirty five rounds in, and things are functioning. Um, once again, I mentioned I had to deal with some stuck casings early on. Uh, that was actually in the realm of, wasn't in the first 150, so it'd be like 151 through 450. I had, man, probably six or seven stuck cases. Uh, I was able to mortar one of those out, and then the rest of them, I, I attempted to mortar and the extractor actually like pulled the rim, like marred the rim of the case, wouldn't grab it. So I had to use, uh, I had to use some rods and a piece of wood, drive that out. Consequently, I did obviously have to open the receiver to get the bolt carrier out of the way. And um, so this test is already not exactly what I had hoped. My hope was that uh, after the cleaning and lubrication at the very beginning that it would not be opened again at all. Uh, couldn't help that. Uh, you can call this a failure if you want and either mark it down not to buy Palmetto State or mark it down not to buy Wolf. Uh, the thing I find odd is that for the final nearly 600 rounds I had no issues. Uh, so, again, read into that what you will. Maybe one of you guys is smart enough that you can just jump down in the comments and tell me exactly what happened. Uh, I, I think it could be some combination of lubrication, what little lubrication ends up in the chamber, which, again, shouldn't be very much. You don't want to spike chamber pressures. Um, but I, uh, obviously, you pass an oiled swab down your barrel. Uh, maybe that little bit of, of oil burned off before we got a good carbon seal in there and the casings, steel casings sticking on bare nitride. I don't know. I don't know. Um, again, 
Regardless of my firing cadence though, for the final 550 rounds, I had no stuck cases. We'll see how this goes from here on out. Uh, once again, though, I did have to break the receiver open. Uh, there was no cleaning, no lubrication going on in that time period. I removed the bolt. I, uh, I, I cleared the chamber, put the bolt back in and went. So um, first thousand rounds in the record books. We'll see how it goes from there. And um, yeah, I don't know. Jump in the comments. Tell me how far you think that we're going to get before this just completely locks up. Uh, there's no pull going, but you know, I figure last can last I knew, military arms was at like 6,500, 6,700 rounds of brass in their Bravo company. I'd guess, I'd guess we're gonna get. 5,000 rounds before maybe, I don't know, my, I might have to put a drop of oil in through the ejection port. I don't know. We'll see. Um, I don't know enough to even make a good guess. So I'm interested to see what you guys think. Hey, if you want to help out uh, with doing crazy things like buying ammunition, buying accessories, things like that, all of the things that it takes to keep the channel going, you can do that over at Patreon or Subscribestar. Uh, links uh, links up on the screen links down in the description uh, you can sign up at any level there's no tiers or anything anything that you find that you can do will absolutely help the channel every little bit does help if you'd like to help the channel but get something back for yourself besides the videos uh, you can head over to our merchandise store and pick yourself up some t-shirts or a coffee cup uh, different things to help spread awareness of the Second Amendment, show your stance, and the channel gets a few dollars from everything you buy over on the web store. If you're not following the channel on social media, you should be doing that. You can follow us over on Instagram and Facebook with that username that was up on your screen, and you're just going to see all sorts of things. Uh, you might find Second Amendment news as it's coming along, uh, legislation that you might need to take a look at that could affect your Second Amendment rights, cultural commentary, just a little bit of everything. Not to mention you can keep tabs on me and, and help hold me accountable when I share workouts or forget to share workouts or get lazy and don't do workouts. <laughs> If you haven't already, I'd appreciate a thumbs up on the video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and then click that notification bell if you're watching on YouTube so you see when I upload new content. Speaking of YouTube, and we know how they've been lately with gun channels, uh, make sure that you use the links in the description and either subscribe to the channel on BitChute or on GunStreamer where I mirror the content. That way if anything happens that YouTube deplatforms us, we can still keep tabs on each other. I appreciate you guys watching. Until next time, shoot straight, stay safe.